Hello and welcome to Overcoming Self-Doubt. I'm Linda Chin and I started this series at the beginning of lockdown when I thought that sharing experiences might be helpful. This morning I'm joined with, by Mark Tweed from Cyber Jammies. Good morning, Mark. Morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, a delight to have you here today. So, Brand Director at Cyber Jammies, multi-award winning for your designs, for your service, for best-selling collections. But I guess this is um, a good time for you guys with people moving much more working from home and having more comfortable clothing. But I know that when we first talked about you joining this interview series, we weren't really sure where the markets were going to go, what was going to happen. How have you been keeping? Well, I mean, look, we're, we're incredibly lucky. Um, we any any clothing area um there's numerous clothing areas that have, that have struggled and understandably so in in tough market um like this one so yeah at, at the start of lockdown we were very ready for a drop off in business um we sell to john lewis house of fraser um next uh, the fennec group so and, and probably about another 150 stores across the uk so with all the stores closing, we naturally expected a downturn in business um, and were preparing to batten down the hatches like, like, like most industries. Um, we, you know, within a few days, it was pretty apparent that actually, you know, people still wanted nightwear. Um, lots of people staying at home, not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, nightwear has become almost a... It's become a new work wardrobe, I guess, is uh, one of the ways of putting it. So, you know, people are comfortable putting some um, cosy, comfy PJs on and still being part of a Zoom call. It's been a difficult time and anything that makes us feel better can mean yeah. really helpful right now. Yeah. Um, but look, now we, we, you know, we, we had a, a dramatic drop off with lots of, lots of our wholesale customers cancelling future orders uh, into the autumn winter. Um, but thankfully, um, within you know, literally a matter of weeks, we we were starting to see most of that business come back. So at the beginning of that, when you weren't quite sure where things were going to go, how did you prepare yourselves from a business perspective, from a mental health perspective? You know, how how were you braced for what was coming next? I I try and remain positive in most most situations as much as as much as you can. Um, Staying busy um, is one thing, um, and you know we, because we knew we had product that would would be interesting to people. We ju we just went through what most businesses, I guess, would do. So we tried to get all our costs down as much as we could. So anything which we thought, okay, you know, is is there something we can save there? Um, so the first week was a lot of phone calls to energy companies, uh, our office space. Uh, what can we do? How you know? How can we get our costs down um, until we're you know we're more more certain about what we're doing? So for me, taking action in whatever form that takes was my way of keeping control of what was a, you know a situation where you know you can very quickly lose control. And um, so taking any action was good action for me mentally. And that's been actually a really strong theme that's come through these interviews because like, self doubt can feel it's most crippling when you feel like you can't step forward in any kind of way whereas doing something can change that immediately we've um made a number of tough decisions during lockdown as well um some of which uh were you know i, I was really worried about to be honest um we have moved warehouse during lockdown which was a particularly tough part of what we we had to deal with um we were due to move warehouse anyway um, in advance of lockdown. But then once we were in lockdown, we didn't feel it was right to do so. Um, but with our business on the web taking off, we were almost forced into a position of, of needing to move, but needing to move safely. Um, and, you know, the fear of getting that wrong was, was pretty significant. Um, and it was only really by just taking a step at a time, one job at a time, one conversation at a time that we managed to kind of work our way through in what was actually a pretty tough, tough situation. And you're in now, you're safely in new premises. Thankfully, yes. So, um, they're a much larger warehouse. Uh, it's a third, it's a third party warehouse. Um, but they're automated, which previously we were 
um, work into a much more manual system. So control of stock, control of orders, um, and, and most importantly for us, they're scalable. So, you know, whereas before we were restricted as to how many orders we could physically get out a day, um, now that our business has expanded pretty dramatically over the last 12 weeks, actually, you know, it's exciting for us because, you know, no, no, no number is too big. Well done to you guys. I guess tied to that though, in a way, there is still you know, more uncertainty then. So there's a lot of change. And, and so you'll have different challenges now because of massive growth. How are you handling that right now? Well, I mean, look, we've, it's not only our business, uh, it's not only our own website that's been performing, it's John Lewis's website. Next, next numbers are, are, you know, totally off the charts compared to what we were doing before. So all our wholesale customers that have a website presence are saying, can we have more, Mark? Mm -hmm. um, our production is made in India, um, in our own factories, and we managed to get, um, get all our social distancing in place in the factories fairly early. Um, and actually it's in a region of India that's actually got a really low um, COVID rate and therefore it's enabled them to still function. So up to a certain point, it's been great, but actually the demand now is completely outstripping what we thought was, was going to happen. But not only that, we're actually at a position now where we don't think we can, we can achieve all the, all the potential orders that we've got. So from a business point of view and from a, from a guy running, you know, loving his sales, it's frustrating. So we're now at a position where we could be doing better, but we have to be realistic and say, well, this, this might not happen. Um, the biggest threat really is that India's COVID rate is increasing all the time. And whilst the region where we are is, uh, where the factories are, is, uh, has got a really low rate, we actually ship our goods out of uh, Mumbai port. And Mumbai has an incredibly high rate um, of COVID. So, we're genuinely in a position now where sales and demand are massive and there is a real chance that we won't be able to get stock out. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's <laughs> genuine concern and fear that actually we may, you know, we may be joining lots of other industries and, and not able to, to, to perform to the level that we, you know, that we can achieve. That could be quite overwhelming in some respects, thinking there's so many elements I can't control. We've got to keep an eye on all these situations that are happening elsewhere. How are you remaining positive as you are dealing with that uncertainty? Well, um, the, first, the first comment we've all said is if, if stock doesn't manage to leave the country, there isn't a great deal we can do. We've actually got quite a large amount of stock in the UK because we've been trying to bring as much as we, as we could across. Um, yeah, it's it's back to back to let's take some more steps. Um, is it that we move port? So is it that we say, okay, Mumbai is closed, but there is a port, and and believe it or not, the next nearest port is six hundred and fifty kilometres away. Um, okay, that might be another option. Um, is it a case of try and get as much on each container as we possibly can, and worry about it when it gets here? So look, I think. From our point of view, we will always take the positive out of this. We've had an incredibly good run. Um, if we did start to stutter and struggle because because the, the stock stopped, we're just grateful that we've we've been able to do as well as we have. Um, so yeah, see the positives in the situation. We've done well to date, mm -hmm. uh, but there's there's always a way around it. There's always something else that we could do um, if we can move port. Yes, it will cost us more in, in the short term, but that's a, you know, it might take another couple of weeks for that stock to get here, but we can still function and we can still trade. And yes, we could take more money, but that's, that's, that's achieving something pretty positive. Um, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm lucky we've got um, the managing directors based in India. He is, he's exactly the same. He's uh, incredibly positive, works his socks off, um, we talk, you know, one minute we'll be talking at six o'clock in the morning, next minute we'll, we'll be talking at 10 o'clock at night. So, you know, but between the two of us, we'll find a way of, of, of making things happen. Um, look, I'm not saying it's easy. It's not. Um, and yeah, there's every single day I have, I have doubts about whether, whether we're making all the right decisions, but I think as long as you're taking those decisions, 
making making a positive step um it enables me to get through the day put it that way fantastic so small steps taking action thinking more creatively about other potential options there, there can be another way so stop putting energy into thinking about other options i mean look the other thing I, that, that's probably worth worth me bringing up i mean for for months now um this is this is quite um you know not for everybody i get up at, i try and get up as close to five o'clock in the morning as i can get, granted that is not for everybody I, I totally understand that um i try and exercise first thing so i get my body raring to go first thing um on the way into our office so i'm lucky enough that i can still come into our office i'll drive into the office and i'll listen to podcasts i'll listen to to audio books um, all of which are other people that are experiencing lockdown and how they're getting through it um you know it's i'm i'm tr I'm, I'm trying to act, you know i'm 47 years old but i am there's a lot i can learn <laughs> um whether it be business whether it be life whether it be relationships etc so I love now, I probably soak in more information now than I did as a, as a kid at school um, because I enjoy it and I enjoy learning and I enjoy moving on. That way of life of an early start when it's quiet in the house, listening or reading to other people that have, you know, made serious, you know, seriously, you know, good achievements in their life, um, mm -hmm. I think has made the world a difference to me. So learning off other people that have got a positive mental attitude is definitely without doubt has had a rub off you know has, has rubbed off on me that's brilliant and as you say five o'clock starts might not be for everyone but what can be done for everyone it can be actually taking the time out for you know, having that space and time to step back and reflect and learn from others you know, see another perspective i'm i've always been a morning person so it, it suits me to do the morning but i think the most important thing in as far as this is concerned is get your me time at some point whatever suits you and whatever whatever works for you and for me if i start the day off well chances are the day will go well and, and actually coming back to your point about creativity and finding other options if you're always introducing new perspectives into your own thinking the potential to find other options just should be greater yeah i mean look the what what it's also helped me do is it's just given me that extra little piece of knowledge around a subject for example so marketing is is um one of the reasons why our, our website is doing as well we we spend on google advertising we spend on facebook and instagram etc i need we, we we actually use a freelancer to to help us to to run that mm -hmm. but i need to ask him the right questions and i need to be able to direct him in a way that that says right so i know what they want um we're going to leave you to be the expert on 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 your side but i need to be able to ask those right questions um and that's you know that's it's it's little 20 minute bursts it doesn't even have to be a big long course that you have to go on it what, one of the big things for me is is um as far as content putting content out there as a brand it's no longer about me trying to sell my product it's about trying to provide content that other people want um in exactly the same way as we're we're having this interview it's you you are providing other people with good information um and it makes it you know enjoyable to watch um and people want to learn so you know it's this it's that sort of information that i've found particularly useful you're specifically saying we are running adverts on google on facebook obviously we, we want potential customers to hear about us or existing customers to be reminded about us but we're not thinking about the messaging we're pushing out. It's very much thinking about what does the recipient want to see? You know, how can we help you rather than we're selling pajamas? Look, if, if we manage to sell some pajamas, after, you know, after a number of interactions, that is a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've we've changed our our blog is now a sleep blog. So once upon a time it was, oh, we're in such and such magazine. Oh, we're in another magazine. Oh, we're in another magazine. It's in, in, in all honesty, it wasn't getting a huge amount of um, interaction from people looking at it. Actually, now if you go on our blog, it's called a sleep blog. We get guest bloggers that, 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 you know, I mean, a lot of people have struggled to sleep in lockdown because of all the various different pressures that, that, that they're under. So now we've got 
these, you know, these are some of the best ways to help you sleep. These are, these are some really good habits to get into in order to help you, help you get to sleep. A lot of it is common knowledge, but actually that's, you know, if we can provide some free content um, that helps people, that's more likely to engage with people. Was there a journey to flip your co content around that way? What uh -huh. shifted you to thinking about value content? I've always try, wanted to try and get a far more engaged customer. Mm. And the fact that we weren't getting it said to me, well, I don't think we're doing this quite right. And then, you know, it was, you know, it's going back to the blogs and the, and the, um, and the podcasts that I've been listening to. So many people were saying, don't just put on your magazine ads, etc." So mm. it was very clear to me that actually we were probably going down the wrong route. Um, and the other thing is I've, I've got, I've, I've got a very small team in the UK, but a good strong team. And I set the challenge and said, right, we need to, you know, we need to do things a bit different here. Um, and then let them get on with it. And actually they're the ones that have come up with the creative stuff. I'm, you know, in all honesty, I'm not overly creative as a, as a person. Um, but if I can just steer people in the right direction, they went out and found the guest bloggers. They talked about the content they thought would be relevant. And now it's on the website. And it's, you know, it's, it's taken a matter of weeks and we've pivoted and mm -hmm. um, so our content should hopefully feel very different and, and, and we can see the response. Mm -hmm. So make a change, make a decision, review it. If it's not working, pivot again. Yes. You're very consistent in, in how you, you're very pragmatic with your approach about how to keep changing things. And actually at the center of that, you might not call it self-doubt, but it, it is the fact of being open to things not being right. Yeah. Oh, it, it's not a, you're not starting from a, we're going to be right and we don't have to listen. You're starting with a, this might not be right and let's find out what we can do to improve it. And then in favour of, um, of, of being an expert in failure. <laughs> Which is a, as a startup right. supporter, it's the theme I love. And the, your, the word of pivot is really important in that. You know, when should you pivot? When should you persevere? And, and I mean, the industries have needed to pivot in, in the current situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a, from a retailer perspective, I'm, I'm still quite surprised that actually quite a lot of my wholesale accounts um, that are store presence only haven't in that three months got themselves a website that's functioning. Um, it, you know, I, <laughs> it, it was probably one of the more natural things. We were lucky enough to have a website that's been running for years. Um, but you know that's that's a that's a reason for someone to pivot. Um, we can't sell our product out of our store. We need to find another way to sell that product. Yeah. Everything you're describing, Mark, is such wonderful growth mindset, lean thinking approach. And I'm I'm broadly smiling because of the fact of I know Cyber Jamies has been around 15, 16 years, and obviously still 16 years on. You know, when you stop thinking like a startup, you don't. But that is the joy of it. It's thinking how to keep looking at things anew and seeing if another change needs to happen, right? Fantastic. Oh, constant change, constant change. It, it, that, that, that won't go anywhere. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. And so, I mean, lots and lots of great tips there in terms of managing uncertainty, managing rapid change, whether negative or positive. I guess to round off um, our time together today, it'd be fantastic to hear something about how you're remaining very positive on a personal note because we covered a lot from a business perspective how in this very strange quite difficult time are you remaining positive personally um well i think staying pretty fit and healthy has a big impact on your mind um getting out of, i was i was running with my two kids last night actually um i'd already done a workout in the morning and then my daughter decided she wanted to go for a run so the three of us went out and had a run so i think look if you can stay physically fit i think it has a big impact on your on your your mind personally um i'm lucky to have a very supportive um strong wife that that does a great job of she she takes the lion's share of you know making sure the kids are well looked after etc um I've got, you know, I've got a lot of good friends. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still in contact with some school friends. We had a Zoom call at the weekend, etc. So, look, I, yes, I have good days and I have bad days, um, like everybody does. Um, but look, I think as long as you can keep keep telling yourself that it could, you know, it could be worse, um, and actually, 
you know, you, you're taking positive steps. You know, I've, I've always been that way inclined. So I, I always like to think positively. Um, yeah, I, I, grateful for, a, for a, a close loving family, I guess, as well. The support of a wonderful family, keeping positive, and then from a business perspective, keeping pivoting. That sounds like the key themes from today. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. 